In the early 1500s, Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus proposed an astonishing new idea. The planets revolved around the sun, not the earth. The Roman Catholic Church called it heresy, and those who supported it risked their lives and their souls. Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei thought it might be true, but needed proof. Harvard historian Owen Gingrich has been searching for what finally convinced Galileo and changed the scientific world forever. Now, he thinks he has found that evidence on a scrap of paper hiding in Ann Arbor, Michigan, a scrap that had been overlooked for 400 years. Galileo has written that he uh, was a Copernican, but it was obvious that he was keeping quiet about it. Galileo demanded proof, which no one could provide. But in 1609, he got help from a radical new invention. Galileo has his ear to the ground, hears about these people in, um, in Holland that are making these things called telescopes. He is a pretty good physicist. He grinds his own lenses, makes his own two-inch telescope, and has the good sense to point it at the sky. And now he's really onto something because the telescope lets him see what's going on. He recorded his official observations in a logbook now preserved in Florence, Italy. But the unfinished letter where he sketched his initial observations of Jupiter wound up on the auction block. Then in the 1930s, it was donated to the University of Michigan Library in Ann Arbor. In 2009, the university asked historian of science Owen Gingrich to analyze that almost forgotten scrap. I realized that, wait a minute, it was a letter, but it had some uh, extra space at the bottom. And it had observations. He had jotted it down on this scrap paper. But I realized that they matched some later observations in the logbook. With the help of the Ann Arbor scrap, Gingrich has reconstructed a new timeline of the most important observations in Galileo's career. On the night of January 7, 1610, Galileo sees Jupiter with three little stars on a line, two on the left, one on the right. But on the next night, they have rearranged themselves. Stars couldn't do that. Four nights later, one of the stars has nearly disappeared. But on the night of the 13th, Galileo sees a fourth one. The Ann Arbor scrap reveals his attempts to understand what he's seeing. At first, he draws them in a straight line, but then he realizes one is slightly out of line and he redraws them at the top of the scrap. They weren't stars, they were moons. Something must have clicked because then he realized exactly what was going on here. What he had was a miniature Copernican system with these satellites going around Jupiter, just as the planets go around the sun. Jupiter's grasp on its moons was proof that not everything in the universe orbits the Earth. It was therefore possible that something else, the sun, could be at the center. We can see that in the course of just a few hours in that evening, he must have converted from being a very timid Copernicus to being an enthusiastic crusader for the heliocentric cosmology. This is the defining moment of Galileo's career. The earlier part of the logbook is written in Italian. Now he moves to Latin. Why? Because Latin was the international language of science. He knew he had something, a big story to tell everybody. So in this little period, 1609, winter of 1610, it's true that Galileo establishes this important thing, moving the whole center of the universe from the Earth to the Sun. It was rather, rather exciting because how can you reconstruct something like this so long ago? This particular one of Galileo is looking at him at just an instant, one evening of his life. And it's very remarkable that you can do something like that. It's almost like magic. Galileo would die under house arrest, convicted of heresy by the church for promoting the sun-centered theory of the universe. But his stubborn adherence to the truth 
would ensure him fame and glory for the next four centuries. <laughs>